Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at Game Maker, because Game Maker just released a roadmap of their upcoming developments for 2023, and we start with a quick recap. Now, if you've never heard of Game Maker before, this is a game that has been around for a very long time. First started development at the turn of the century, so back in 1999. Uh, it's been through a lot of changes since then, uh, but the, the core ethos has been the same. It's a simple-to-use 2D uh, game engine with multiple ways of programming it. There's a visual programming language as well as their own GML uh, Game Maker language. Uh, it's been used to make several successful games, including Undertale Hotline Miami, Hyper Light Drifter, as well as Nuclear Throne, and more. So it has definitely got pedigree. It has shipped a number of titles. Uh, since the days of Game Maker founding, there's been a lot of changes, some scandals. We also saw that they were bought by Yo-Yo Games. That has had some direct results. One of the things is there is now a completely free version of it. It is for making uh, web games only, the free version, uh, and then you can jump up to the other tiers. If you're curious what Game Maker costs, you're looking at um, the free version, which gives you the ability to create uh, GX games. That's a, an opera thing. Um, export out of it. You could create you know, your own local games in web, but if you want to get into desktop games, you're looking at five bucks a month or a yearly plan. Indie gives you web and mobile on top of that. And then finally, there's Enterprise, which adds console exports. So that's kind of the pricing and the tiers of Game Maker itself. But we're going to jump into what to expect from Game Maker in 2023 in just a sec. But first, let's go quick hands on with Game Maker itself. Here you can see Game Maker. Uh, this is the editing environment. It gives you a visual room style editor. So you basically, your, your game is made up of rooms. Uh, you've got drag and drop into the world. Everything has nice integrated editing. So you can come in and actually edit um, objects, change out the code on them, set up animations, and then you've also got the ability to add logic to it. Speaking of game logic, we'll look at this guy instances, head on down over here, and you're going to find the game manager as an example. I'm going to open this guy up, and what you're going to see, this is the instance for handling the, um, the game itself. The game logic is here. So go here into edit object, and what you're going to see here uh, is the various different entities attached to it. So what you see here is it's got a number of events, create, cleanup, step, alarm, alarm one. So this is each pass through the game loop. It runs this code over here. Here is the initialization code. And this, what you see over here, this is GML script. Now I'm not used to using this editor for zooming things around, but this is one of the things that's actually going to change in 2023. There is a new uh, code editor available. As you can see, you can pop things into a full screen environment. Uh, can I use, I don't know how to zoom my code in to make it bigger or smaller, so I can't actually show you that code very well, but I can see this is GML. It's a very straightforward programming language. It's kind of like a um, little bit of C-ish things. It, it, they've been adding more functionality that's been missing for a very long time. For example, GML just got support for structs a little while back, but this is just one of the options. As you will see if I head on over here, here is the exact same game uh, template going on here, and what I'm going to do, the same object here, we'll open that guy up, We'll edit the objects. And now what you're seeing, this is GML. This is using a uh, visual style programming language instead. Uses a number of drag and drop constructs for handling things kind of in a you know, process top-down flow of events to work with. So if you'd prefer to use a visual programming language, that is an option available to you. There is also the script language option in there as well. So it's the full editing environment, everything you need to create a 2D style games. So you see down here, you've got things like animations, extensions, particle systems, paths, sounds, shaders, and so on. You do have those two programming modes. You do have this editor, uh, which is pretty intuitive and straightforward to work with. And that is a crux of what Game Maker is all about right now. So now we're going to head back over here and look at what they're going to be adding uh, going forward. So one of the new things that they've got here is a new runtime. So uh, they're reworking the compiler. Uh, so providing faster performance, easier debugging, and improved coding. The new tool chain compiles to each platform natively, meaning you no longer have to choose between using a virtual machine or YYC, which I believe is the YoYo compiler. YoYo was the name of the company before Opera bought it. Um, so desktop and web components of Game Maker's new runtime will be available soon to a small number of closed beta participants. Over the course of the beta, we'll be focused on providing a compatibility layer between the current GMS2 runtime and the new runtime. So what this ultimately should mean is your games should run faster, all be of native caliber performance. And it does look kind of like with this new runtime, the, the VM will ultimately go away. Uh, also modding extensions. This is using uh, mod.io. Popular website supports a range of game mods, including simple DLC options and more sophisticated user-created levels in data. So you're going to be able to add user modding to your game's 
it facilitated via mod IO, which we will get back to in a second. Uh, we got the new code editor. So this one is one of the more interesting things. So they've redesigned the code editor. Uh, so this should be coming in autumn of this year. Initially, you need to enable it to check it out. So what you can expect is the UI has been redesigned and the code editor is now hosted within a full screen window, allowing access to objects, events, and functions within the same code file. Uh, new objects and new events can be created from within the code, within the code editor itself. So there is little need to move between between the workspace and the code editor. All syntax highlighting and intelligence support is being moved to a language server, which allows us to support more languages within the code editor, such as shader languages, adding intelligence sense to those shader languages, uh, JSON support, XML support, and so on. And they're also working uh, supporting markdown within notes, uh, introducing side-by-side -side preview support to make it easier to see how changes affect the formatting. Uh, so language server, any language servers that uses the standard protocol will uh, be usable within Game Maker. So you should be able to embed more and more languages in there. Also, the language server is being open sourced. So you should be able to use their language server, therefore, in other tools. So you should get better um, GML editing functionality support in uh, things such as Visual Studio Code, anything that wants to implement the, their language server. Uh, they're also getting prefabs. So last year, they update and included prefabs. Projects contain any number of GameMaker resources that can be defined, editable parameters. This year, the prefab library will be added to GameMaker. Prefab library will be a new window within GameMaker that displays built-in and user-created prefabs. You'll be able to drag from the library into rooms or sequences without adding the prefab contents to your project. The compiler will then pull the requested components using resource reference when testing or exporting the game. Uh, they're also getting... Um, working on moving all the IDE code into plugins, making a minimal core for the IDE that maintains the file formats and serialization and orchestrates the plugins that do the real work. The recently added particle editor and feather are both implemented as plugins. And we plan on moving feather into the language server. Language servers will run within the runtime rather than the IDE and will have a, a different life cycle to the IDE. Uh, so integrations there. And then of course, this had to be announced because everything needs AI right now. And they are looking at implementing AI into uh, GameMaker. Now that apparently Opera has a partnership with OpenAI. OpenAI is the company behind ChatGPT. So they've been experimenting with systems that allow AI queries and results to be incorporated directly into the project. Uh, so we're early stages, excited AI can offer in terms of code generation, creating graphical placeholders and even allowing image in painting or out painting, which is like removing stuff from an image via AI. Um, so they're looking at AI art gen and code generation tools to be added using OpenAI, which again is ChatGPT, uh, among other tools they offer there. Um, and then there is a new marketplace. So in collaboration with Opera Cloud Gaming Team, uh, investigating a system for hosting a new marketplace very early. Let's see what actually happens if you click this link. By the way, they do have a video. Kind of covers everything we just went through right here. It's like 35 minutes long, but if you want to go ahead and check that one out. Uh, so yeah, here is the new Game Maker Marketplace. Uh, interestingly enough, and if I've got it up here still, this is Mod IO, uh, which enables mod supporting. It's it's a third party modding tool, and that is what they are ultimately using to add their new mod support to Game Maker. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. And the cool thing here is, if you go ahead and check out Game Maker, um, you can download it for free. You know, you're basically getting full functionality except for uh, the export stuff. So, it's the full tool. Uh, everything you see here is available. Um, you know, so everything you need to create your game games is part of this tool. It's mostly just platform stuff that you're missing out on and a couple other like support things, maybe some analytics, that kind of stuff. But uh, what you'll see here, so if you come in here, so I showed you this Towers and Monsters demo, but there is a number of tutorials to get you up and going. There is a tutorials link here to walk you through that as well. But there's a bunch of actual games to, to start things off. So for example, this guy here, let's go ahead and create that. So if you want to come in here and get started using Game Maker, there is a bunch of tools and templates to get you up and running. So let's open that guy up. Let's grab one of the levels here. So open up said level. Here you go. Pretty straightforward. It is a grid based tiled editor here. So yeah, you know, character paths and so on. Here is your main character. What you probably want to do is come down in here and actually just go instances and find, for example, your object player, which is this guy right here. And we go ahead and edit that guy. I forget if this guy is visual or not. So let's find out it's creation code. 
Uh, yeah, so this is the, using the drag and drop language right there. So there are a ton of samples and tutorials and such to get you up and running with Game Maker. Again, this guy has been around for several, several years, has made several very successful uh, games, so it is a proven engine uh, and a decent number of updates coming to it. I think under Opera's stewardship or ownership, things have gone pretty well for Game Maker on the whole, uh, but it's not an engine that I have used in a while. So some interesting updates here. We're getting the new language server. We're getting the uh, VM going away. Uh, some some definite changes that look interesting, and of course AI stuff because everything needs to have AI stuff. Let me know what you think of Game Maker in general, Game Maker's roadmap for 2023, and that is it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.